thank you all for being here today um, to help support us and giving our friend his, his day of honor and respect. It means a lot to see you all and braving the elements uh, to share this real special day with us, our team, and the community. On behalf of Almond Funeral Homes, a sincere thank you. Sincerely thank you for this. Uh, I'd like to introduce our two, our first uh, speaker. He's going to offer a eulogy, a uh, local uh, Berks historian. I'm going to try to get this right. Charles J. Adams III. Yes, Kyle <laughs> Blank and Biller. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, round of applause. We'll welcome Charles Adams. Thank you very much. This is amazing. What an amazing morning. and. Uh, uh, it's also the 147th, 74th anniversary of the death on this date of Edgar Allan Poe. And I'm wearing my Edgar Allan Poe socks today. <laughs> stone Man Willie. He's not made of stone. His name was not Willie. Or was it? <laughs> but what is absolutely certain that he was in life, a man. His afterlife, so to speak, has been rather anomalous. He could well have been ignominiously ensconced in a crude body bag or a pine box and interred in a pauper's grave in a potter's field under a marker with a number on it, if that. He died and tested. He, there were no friends, no relatives to give him a proper burial, I put that in quotes, or to mourn him. Instead, there were those who, in a sad sense, mocked him as if he was nothing more than a macabre sideshow freak. Willie has been called a mummy by some and certain observers. He's been referred to as an historical relic. I contend he is neither. I submit that while the circumstances of his life and his death are shrouded forever in mystery, he indeed lived that life as a flesh and blood man, met with misadventures and misfortunes and died as a man would die. But lo, as a result of an accident or experiment, he reposed for many decades as a quaint and quirky curiosity. The remains of that man came to this place after being cloaked in a handsome raiment, celebrated by thousands, heralded by a brass band in a gala parade, and reposing in a stately parlor for a solemn six evenings as those who knew him only in legend paid tribute to his life. There were those, happily a very few, who assailed these events as crass and humiliating to the legacy of this man, this Willie. I would invite them to join in the second line of a funeral procession on Bourbon Street, or a wake in a pub in Galway, hoisting a pint of Guinness, or a mausoleum in Moscow, or an apse in St. Peter's Basilica. I would invite them to allow their blunted imaginations to appreciate and yes, celebrate the shadowy bounds between this man's life and legend. And now today, here, with dignity, a comforting and consoling word that is in the keystone of Almond's Funeral Home's corporate identity, the remains of this man who shall forever be known in the ledger of the legends and lore of Berks County as Willie, despite any research that may prove. <laughs> will be sealed serenely and safely in the soil for eternity. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Um, this time I'd like to introduce a very well-known Berks County historian, uh, as well as the president emeritus of the Berks History Center, a uh, man who no need, needs no introduction. Um, Please welcome George X. Miser, the ninth. The tenth. The ninth. You did five. The ninth. The ninth. <laughs> Damn it, I almost got it. Welcome, George. Thank you. I didn't realize we were going to be outside today. Oh, thank you. Gee, I might even join him. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize we were going to be outside today, so I'm cutting my half hour speech down to about six minutes. Bear with me, I'll talk fast. On this auspicious occasion, we gather to bid farewell to a local legend, well known to this area's general population for many decades. His legendary reputation is such that can be verified by the number of people here assembled
to witness his departure from the land of the living. I first saw Willie 75 years ago when a group of us, when a group of us sixth graders from Charles Bruce Grade School in Reading rode our bike to 247 Penn Street asking whether we might see Stone Man Willie. The gentleman who greeted us at the door was congenial and welcomed us in. It was a sighting not soon forgotten. If memory serves me correctly, Willie has changed very little since my first encounter, <laughs> other than the fact that he now appears rather stately in fine attire, specially acquired for the current event. A capsule history of Stoneman Willie has been on numerous television reports and in an array of newspapers, including the Washington Post, the New York Times, and our own Reading Eagle. Alexa Fryman, a local historian with a gift for lavish illustration, has posted an engaging account of our man of the hour on YouTube. To see it, simply access Stone Man Willie and her comprehensive overview will appear. Accordingly, there is little to be <coughs> gained from a biographical recapitulation at this time. Rather, it seems more appropriate to comment on relevant facts dealing with Theodore A. Ullman and his pioneering work with arterial embalming that set apart almonds from every other funeral enterprise in Berks County and far beyond. At about age 16, <clears throat> Allman apprenticed himself to his brother-in-law, Nathaniel Henninger of New Holland to learn cabinet making and funeral directing. During his apprenticeship, he made uh, trips to Philadelphia to study rudimentary embalming, a process little practiced those days and virtually unheard of hereabouts. Allman was quick to realize that embalming had a distinct advantage over ice chest preservation, then used in the hopes of uh, keeping loved ones presentable until burial. In 1889, at the age of 20, Mr. Allman established the local undertaking firm of Allman Brothers in a frame building at 16 North 3rd Street. In their first year of business in 1890, 31 services were conducted. It's reported that in the autumn of 1895, while browsing through a used bookstore in Philadelphia, Allman came upon a German publication dealing with the approaches to scientific specimen preservation. <coughs> Intermission. <laughs> it involved the chemical known as formalin, which had properties favorable to the preservation of flesh in all its forms. With some difficulty, he managed to procure a small supply from which he could explore its potential benefit in the undertaking practices. On November the 19th, 1895, a prisoner died in his cell in the Old Berks County Prison, the foundation of which can still be seen in City Park, just above the intersection <coughs> of 11th and Penn. Prison officials held the body of the deceased malefactor, pending the arrival of some family representative to claim the body. This never happened. For whatever reason, the body was not sent to a medical college, as usually was the case. Instead, permission was granted to Mr. Allman to take charge of Mr. Penn, for a chemical procedure commonly known as embalming, arterial embalming. As embalming was virtually unknown to undertakers of the area and nothing definitive as to what chemical concentration was the norm, was available to guide in the process. In his pioneering effort, Allman resorted to accepted scientific exploration. It turned out that the chemical concentration was too great Instead of preservation in the manner known and practiced universally today, the tissue expanded rapidly and forcefully, causing cell membranes to break down, allowing the injected fluid to circulate rather freely. Miscalculation aside, Willie, originally dubbed Stone Willie, remained for 120 year, 128 years in an amazing state of preservation, considering nothing had been done in the way of further treatment since 1895. Following his embalming, Willie returned to Almonds, awaiting someone to come forward to claim him. Weeks passed, months passed, years passed, and nobody claimed the remains. Willie continued <coughs> to repose on his beer at Almonds, in part because Mr. Allman was interested to see how long the body would remain in a presentable condition over the passage of time. The late Tom Boland, for decades managing editor of the Reading Eagle, was an acquaintance of Mr. Allman. Up to the time Theodore passed away in 1933, Tom would occasionally ask about Willie's condition, to which Mr. Allman would reply, the vigil continues. 
Possibly with Mr. Ullman's interest in mind, Lily simply remained on the premises until the present time. That time has come to lay Willie to rest in a respectable manner and in an appropriate location. For this, we have to thank Kyle Blankenbiller, uh, Ullman's location manager and funeral director for the lengths to which he has gone to make this such a memorable occasion. It will long be remembered. I chose with the thought that <laughs> Mr. Ullman, wherever you are, be apprised that on this day, the vigil concludes. That's it. Mm -hmm. Folks, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Reverend Robert Whitmire, who's going to offer some uh, graveside prayers and a communal service for uh, Mr. Willie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let us prepare our hearts to be with God. Friends, hear the promises of God. God is near to all who call, who call from their hearts. The desires of those who fear God are fulfilled. Their cries are heard. They are saved. I am the resurrection and the life. All who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And blessed are the dead who die in Christ. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Friends, we are gathered here today to lay to rest one who went by the name James Penn and who we have known as Stone Man Willie, who at one time may have been a beloved friend and family member to those who may have personally known him. He did become a friend of all those who compassionately took care of him for over 128 years. Now, although this man struggled maybe with addictions and made mistakes during his life as we all do, we have come to know him as well as a celebrity as such in Reading. Many have chosen to remember him as being the first experimental embalming in our area. He was also documented in historical records as the oldest known mummy in the United States. But in God's eyes, mm. he is a man, yes. one of his children, yes. and we've come to lay him to rest today. Yes. Now we cannot know for sure what the condition of this person's heart might have been in the moments before his death. God's mercy is rich, vast, and incomprehensible. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, mm -hmm. and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Mm -hmm. So then it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. Amen. And so it is we gather here today yes. to commend to God the life of Stone Man Willie. Mm -hmm. And as we celebrate the good news of Christ's resurrection, for whether we live or whether we die, we belong to the Lord, who is both of the dead and of the living. Yes. Friends, hear a few words from the Holy Scriptures, first from Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. There's a time to be born, a time to die time to plant and a time to pluck up. There's a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. <coughs> he has made everything suitable for its time. And from Paul's letter to the Romans, these words, for none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. Mm -hmm. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So for this very reason, Christ died and returned to life mm -hmm. so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and powerful, by the death and burial of Jesus, you anointed 
your only son, who has destroyed the power of death yes. and has made holy the resting places of all your people. Yes. Keep our brother, Stone Man Willie, mm. whose body we now finally lay to rest mm. in the company of all your saints. And at last, O oh God, raise him up to share with all the faithful the endless joy and peace won through the glorious resurrection of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 And here are these two scriptures from the New Testament, Paul's letter to the Philippians. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by that power that enables him to bring everything under his control mm -hmm. will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. And finally, from the gospel, Jesus says, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. You trust God, now trust in me. Mm -hmm. There are many rooms in my father's house and I'm going to prepare a place for you. Yes. If this were not so, I would tell you plainly. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. No, I will not abandon you. As orphans, I will come to you. And in just a little while, the world will not see me again. But you will, for I will live again, and you will too. So friends, Willie's room is ready. And it is time to turn him over to God's hands. So friends, into your hands, O oh, merciful Savior, now we commend Stone Man Willie. Acknowledge we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a son of your own, redeem me. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. And in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we do commend to Almighty God our brother, Stone Man Willie, we commit his body now to this ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord's face shine on him with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon him with favor and give him peace. Rest eternal, grant him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. Let us pray. O Lord, support now all of us the day long of this troubled life. Until the shadows lengthen and the ever and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed, the figure of life is over and our work is finally done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at last through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Whitmire. Um, on behalf of our team, uh, before we do do the name reveal, uh, I'd like to thank you all for being here. We have even kept the name away from Mr. Adams and Mr. Miser. <laughs> so, but one of the reporters slipped it out. Oh, you did, yes, she did. Oh, uh, luckily, I mean, George is ruining my moment right luckily, now. <laughs> at my age, I forgot it already. <laughs> George and Miser the sixth. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, uh, so basically the basis on how we were able to acquire his name was such certainty as this. And it was stuff that the public wasn't aware of. But in all the documentation that we have researched, and believe me folks, there is volumes of information and research on this gentleman from literally the early 1900s until today. So this, we can give it to you with 99% certainty because for decades, we have known that he is one of two people. We just had it discount the one person. Mr. Allman, who prepared this gentleman, um, and the reason he's still here today, till the day he died, referred to this gentleman by this name. 
So that was a pretty good foundation to go by. Um, I shouldered a lot of the responsibility for taking that step and doing that further research to really narrow it down. But it really became easy. Um, the one gentleman that there was a confusion, I won't get into a lot of detail about it, but the reason for the confusion is at one time, there were two mummies that we know of uh, in Almond's possession. Mr. Willie and the gentleman by the name of Michael Pahonsky, Peruski Pahowski, however you want to say it, however you want to pronounce it, however you want to spell it. So Mr. Pahuski is identified as a gentleman who did indeed commit suicide in the Berks County Prison. So both died in Berks County Prison, both were unclaimed. Pahuski never had family step forward. Two bar patrons at the bar that he was arrested at for stabbing a local patron stepped forward and positively identified him as a very well-known bar fly at this uh, bar on Cotton Street in the south side of Reading. Hmm. I personally visited Mr. Pahuski's grave. The dates line up. I looked at the, the cemetery records. The dates line up on that. Um, when it came to Willie, Everything Willie told his cellmate is true. There wasn't a thing he told him that was untrue with the exception of his, his name. name. He was Irish descent from a fluent family in Ireland. So everything he said outside of a, a pseudo uh, fictitious name was indeed correct. So we've had a lot of questions as to how we came upon this and do we know it for sure. I would say with 99% certainty, and that 1% is a family member walking forward and saying, this is my great, great uncle, James. Mm. Um, so we were fairly certain, I shouldn't say fairly certain, we're very certain, or we wouldn't have put it on his stone. So it's a little bit of the background. If you want more detail on that, please see me or somebody on our staff to certainly help you out with that. Um, at this time, I do want to introduce um, Michael Harkar and Rochelle Hess. They are going to do the name reveal. Mike and Rochelle are our most tenured employees here at Almonds, uh, representing 75 years total of service to our location. Mike is our crematory operator. He's been there 40 years. Rochelle is coming up on 35 as a funeral director. So who better yeah. to do this name yeah. reveal, right? Yes. Um, so what I'm going to have you folks do is I'm going to have you kind of group out here. The stone is currently here. We're going to reveal them on the stone. We'll do the reveal over by the stone. So I'm going to have you all kind of work your way up here around the stone. So folks, again, it's my pleasure, uh, to, our pleasure to participate. Although I got a shout out from Mr. Miser, I would like to thank our team, our entire team, because this was certainly a team effort in bringing this forward and giving Willie the respectful day he so rightfully deserves. So thank you, Almond team, for everything it is you have done. Um, Yay, it certainly, certainly was a uh, yep. uh, intensive effort. So on that, having said that, uh, I'd like to reintroduce to you Rochelle Hess and Michael Harkar. Good afternoon, everyone. I just have a few sentences I would like to say. On behalf of myself and the Almond Funeral Home family, it has been a privilege to care and continue to share in the many stories of Stoneman Willie's history. It is a bittersweet day to lay to rest our long guest of the funeral home. I hope he will continue to have many visitors in his new home here at Forest Hills Memorial Park. May you rest in peace, Stoneman Willie. I just want to take this time to thank Rochelle for sharing them thoughts. As we conclude our week long celebration of our dear, trusted friend, our guest at Theo C. Allman Funeral Home Incorporated since 1895, we are honored to provide him back his mortal name, which he lost so many years ago. Although we will always affectionately refer to him as Stone Man Willie, in the years to come, the immortal Stone Man name doesn't recognize the true identity of a life lived. <laughs> we are honored and proud to call him our treasured guest for well over a century and a quarter. But today, recognizing the importance of bestowing the respect and reverence our dear friend so rightfully deserves, we are proud to announce that on this hollow ground will lie the immortal self of Snowman Willie, otherwise 
known, known as, as where's our scissors? Where's Mr. There? James, James Murphy. Roll, please, Murphy. Rest in peace, James.